So, hi guys. Um, I want to start it off with a quote here. Uh, Time is the most valuable coin in your life. You, and only you alone, will determine how that coin will be spent. Be careful that you do not let others spend it for you. Time. It's an important thing for every single one of us. So today, I want to discuss with you about time management and its benefits. As a student and as a person who you know works um, about 40 hours every week, I have trouble dealing with time management. So it seems to me that as college students, as you guys, it would be nice for everyone to know what time management is and the benefits of, of it all. So I wanted to, um, to go so through some of the things here. So exactly what time management is, helpful skills for um, managing your time, um, self-management and how that is incorporated with time management, and the benefits of it all. So let's start off with what time management is. Carol Woods, she basically said that this guy named uh, Frederick Taylor started off with incorporating this idea of time management into helping his workers get the best out of what they can do. Um, in, my, uh, in an article by Mind Tool, uh, by the Mind Tool content team, they said time management refers to the way that you can organize and plan how long you spend, your spe spend on specific activities. There's different kinds of ways to manage your time. In this slide right here, I show you two different versions. One is by Carla K Kretzinger in her book, Think Smarter Skills for Academic Success. And in her first mark, it shows that setting goals is the first priority. Although in William E. King's version of it, he states it as his third. So there's different ways to incorporating methods of uh, time benefit. So let's talk about some of the skills as well. Setting goals is probably one of the best things you can start off with. David K. Williams says, goals give you a vision to focus and, and destination to work towards. Setting your goals will help start building your plans around them. And uh, a study done by University of Scranton shows that 92% of people who set their goals do not achieve them. This is usually done by the end of February. People are abandoning their New Year resolutions or goals they set for the New Year's. Um, so the next thing I want to talk about is to prioritize those goals. The same guy who wrote the article, David K. William, also wanted you to ask yourself these three questions to help you narrow down those goals that kind of need to be, you know, weeded out. Why am I doing this task or activity? How does this task help me and achieve my goals? To what extent does this task, task I'm doing help me achieve my goals? Um, in another article, Tanya Sussex tries to differentiate those ideas, separating the really urgent ones from the less important ones, saying that if you do need to do something urgent, it's best to set those at the top of your goal as to which you could, ones you could do later, later on in the week, you can just set those aside. And last but not least, let's talk about the benefits of it all. Actually, I skipped one. Let me go here. Oh yeah, self-motivation. Self-management uh, self is incorporated with self-time management just as importantly. Uh, in an article, Marvin Valdich um, said, self-motivation is one of the most powerful forces that drive you to do things to achieve success in business and personal life. Self-motivation is important to all of us because without self-motivation, we literally don't get any of our goals done. In another article, Remus Sasson says, in order to accomplish anything, you need that driving force. <coughs> Otherwise, nothing would happen. Self-control is another way. It's basically saying, like, don't procrastinate. In an article, Anna Swanson said, uh, quoted Timothy Seifel, 
a professor at Carleton University saying most psychologists see procrastination as a kind of avoidance behavior, a coping mechanism gone awry in which people give in to the good feel. And in another article um, found in skillsyouneed.com, self-control is not making rash decisions or overreacting to the situations that are calming, but remain calm and rational. Basically explaining that even though we have like these urges to you know procrastinate, there's sometimes we, we just need to calm down and not stress about some things and try to figure out the best way to go about our goals. So yeah, like I said, last but not least, the benefits of it all. Uh, in an article, Craig Jarrow uh, mentions that managing your time can directly reduce your stress level, fewer surprises fewer tight deadlines, less rushing from task to task and place to place. Um, it's good to know that whenever you have something done, you just, um, you have the less stress about it all. So you have a deadline due in 10 weeks, you're not going to be doing it at the last second, you know? The more you prioritize on that goal of finishing that task, the sooner the better. Uh, Dan Parsons said approximately 9.1 of college students face anxiety disorders or any kind of mental health. It's usually due to not managing your time while having to rush things at the end or doing anything of the sort like that. Another benefit of it all is getting more done. The same article shows that being productive is one of the main goals of time management. When you're aware of what you need to do and you're able to better manage your workload, you'll be able to get more done in less time. In another article by appointmentplus.com, when you learn to take control of your time, you improve your ability to focus. An increased focus comes enhanced efficiency because you don't lose momentum. So let's just go over all that we've talked about. We've talked about what time management is from Carol Woods and her Current Woods and the Mind Tool team and methods of learning of what different ways we can manage and set our, our time management. We've learned about the skills by David William and the University of Scranton, learning that we usually don't keep those goals, but that's the, what exactly the opposite of what we want to do. Some skills that we learned was to set those goals and prioritize them making sure that those goals that we need to do get done and the ones that we don't need to do right away get weeded out. And the last of it, the benefits. The stress of it all can go away just by prioritizing on them and you'll get more done when you, get, when you do them uh, as soon as possible. So if there's anything I can take, uh, you can take away from this is that time management is important for all of us as college students. Thank you. All right, Taylor, what did you think? Uh, I liked how you started off with a quote that was really related to the topic you're going to be talk, uh, talking about. Uh, it was a good hook. Uh, you got to your purpose statement relatively quickly, so we knew exactly what you're talking about. And then right after your purpose statement, you gave like the, um, the signs. Uh, you kind of like the roadmap. Uh, so that was, that was good. Um, on the, I think it was like the second slide, you, on the, the list, you, were, you had two comparisons. You had quite a bit of information, and you only talked about, I think, one of the bullet points. So I think it, you could have made it a little bit less. There was a lot going on, so we were trying to read that while trying to listen to you at the same time. You kind of counteracted each other. Um, with, the, with the slides, with the quotes, when the quotes were a little bit longer, you would tend to read to the, uh, to the screen instead of to us. But when the quotes were shorter, you did good at kind of just summing it up a little bit and giving your analysis of it. And I thought you did that really well. So when the quotes were shorter, you did really well with that. Um, I liked how you also, like at the very end, just gave like a brief summary, kind of reminded us of what you talked about. And you ended it really well. Hmm? OK. Uh, don't stand there. It creeps me out. No, I'm <laughs> sorry. It makes me feel like yeah, you're a target and I'm you know, <laughs> shooting in your general direction. I don't want to do that. Um, 
Yeah, I'm going to agree with uh, most of what Taylor said. I thought that the uh, opening was pretty good. The one thing that I think was maybe missing from the opening is you have that great quote that you tell us that you're going to give us a quote, and then you never tell us who it was from. Uh, you know, and I imagine that it's probably somebody that we would know or recognize or some historical figure, because it, it was a nicely eloquent way of expressing this idea. Uh, I don't, it didn't seem like it was one of the things from all of the other people that you were quoting. It was something that was more distinctive. But then we lose any advantage of that because you don't provide it. But the topic's clear from the beginning. Your thesis is relatively clear. Um, there is a preview of the four points. Uh, I think it could be a little bit more explicit, uh, the, each of the steps that you're talking about. But uh, you did have that at the beginning of the speech. So I can see the mechanics are working here. Um, the Supporting material, you are very consistent about citing sources. Sometimes you need to tell us who these people are. You quoted David Williams several times ago. Who is David Williams? Why should I be listening to this particular person? What is their authority about this? Uh, they wrote a blog page. Uh, they are an author of a book. They're a researcher. They're a scholar. They're somebody who has uh, experienced these kinds of things. I don't know. Uh, and, and the same thing is true for a couple of the other people that you cite. Um, some of the information is, I think, uh, very generic kinds of statements about things, which is not necessarily bad to include, but why it's necessary to have a visual on it also, I don't know. My biggest negative in your presentation has to do with the visuals. They, it's, I think I mentioned this to people when we were talking about visual materials. When you have slides that are just a representation of what the content of the speech is, that's a little bit problematic. So you say, so here's a quote from this person, and here's another quote from this person, and that's what the slides are, the quotes from those people. I'm going, well, if you're saying it, why do I need to see it? I'm not exactly sure that it adds anything to what's being talked about. The one slide that I think uh, uh, Taylor was mentioning, where you, where you have the two different systems, you know, they had, there's a lot of overlap there. There's a couple places where there are differences, and maybe the organization is different. Okay, that's not a bad thing to visualize, but then you don't really say anything about it, and that was the one thing that seemed like it was worth visualizing, and then you don't do anything with it. All the other things which weren't necessary to visualize, you read them almost word for word with what's up there, and that's not necessary to do. So it's kind of backwards of the way uh, the visuals ought to work in the presentation. So the structural stuff, the content stuff, um, I think is, is fine. I think you need to use more examples also to kind of pull the audience in on this subject. You start at the beginning talking about being a student who's working 40 hours a week and how difficult it is for you to keep track of those kinds of things. I'm going, okay, that's, that's a good start. And then when you're in the, in the presentation, you're talking about these different steps. I'm thinking, well, where's the example that would apply to this audience? You kind of keep relating it to the audience. At the end, you come back to that but I'm going, well, where's the, where's the illustration of how that works? Setting goals, for instance, and then we're not meeting them a, f a few weeks later. Well, that sounds like somebody's uh, you know, New Year's resolutions as opposed to setting a goal in a class. An example in class is at the beginning of the semester. I bet there are a lot of people who sit here at the beginning of the, every semester and say, this is the semester. You know, this is the one where I'm going to keep up on all the reading. This is the one where I'm going to come to class every day. This is the one where I'm actually going to speak up and offer my opinion. And then, you know, within a couple of weeks, they're behind and they don't do it. And why does that happen? Well, because... Uh, we get caught up in things or because we don't make a plan to make those things happen. You know, we, we have a goal, but we don't have a plan. And for example, here's something that I did. You know, so something that makes it a little bit more, like you said, to the audience, because I, I think you're appealing to this particular audience, but you've got to get some illustrations that, that kind of bring it to life for the audience. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you.